everyone. Uh, welcome back to Stanford Medicine, Tools for Healthcare Data Science. Um, I'm Priya Desai, and this is part six of tutorial two. Um, as promised in the last video, um, this, this particular video is mostly gonna be about exploring Athena. Um, so go ahead, and that's the link for Athena. Go ahead and, and, and open that link in, a, in another tab. So I'm gonna go do that. Um, before I start talking about Athena, there's something that I realized um, after I finished recording the last video that I forgot to tell you guys about some really nice resources to understand um, the concept table, the, um, the concept relationship, the concept ancestor table. Just, you know, you really have to play around in that space a little bit to, um, to really understand and and, and really get a feel for what's happening. So a couple of other resources that are, are really useful, and I can actually just go back. Um, yeah, are these, the Book of Odyssey, chapter five, uh, and then Eden Academy. Eden, Eden Academy um, is, uh, is in Europe, but they are actually uh, on a regular basis putting out a bunch of tutorials. Um, and this particular one, the one called OMOP CDM and Standardized Vocabularies, kind of tries to do what, what our tutorial is doing. Um, Odyssey.org, they're past symposiums. They've always had um, tutorials and workshops. And um, here are the recordings from some of their past, um, you know, past symposium. And the 2017 um, uh, tutorial on vocabularies, I really liked that one. It, you know, it really helped me understand um, how the different pieces are connected. So I just thought these might be useful to you. So it will be in the, you know, in the PDF of the um, tutorial um, slides that I sent you, but um, yeah, there it is. Okay. All right, so as promised, Athena is really a web interface. It's a GUI for those three concept tables, the concept table, the concept ancestor table, the concept relationship table. Um, and you'll see how easy it gets to really start exploring anything that you may be looking for. It's much easier than exploring it in, um, you know, using SQL, I completely understand. Um, so I really urge you to use Athena. So let's just start out using, you know, okay, atrial fibrillation. So let's just type in atrial fibrillation in the search bar. Uh, okay, I see that it's already. All right. Okay, so a lot of stuff comes up. I have atrial fibrillation. I have all these IDs. Remember, concept ID means it's OMAP. Code means it's from the source code. So these are all the code names in the individual source vocabularies. And you can see here what the vocabulary is. So this is a LOINC vocabulary. That's what it's called in the LOINC vocabulary. And this is its concept ID in the OMOP representation. Um, this is a SNOMED vocabulary, atrial fibrillation. This is the SNOMED code. And you can see it's, uh, it's the, the, the OMOP concept ID is our good old 313217, which we've seen multiple times in the last two videos, right? Um, so here are all the different vocabularies, read vocabulary. This is the one that was an example for you guys, G573000. We had asked uh, you to actually see if you could uh, map the standard concept. So, you know, the standard concept for this will be that, but I'll show you how you can get there, um, you know, just using Athena. Um, you can see which class it belongs to uh, and whether the concept is standard or non-standard. So you can see here this read um, concept, this atrial fibrillation is not a standard concept. This atrial fibrillation is belongs to the SEAL vocabulary. It's not a standard concept. It also, um, you need to check the domain. So for example, this uh, atrial fibrillation, this is a measured value. It belongs to, um, you know, it, it, it's from the LOINC vocabulary. It's, it's a measured value. It doesn't even mean the same thing as the condition of atrial fibrillation, right? So you want the domain to be condition um, for the atrial fibrillation that we were looking for. So how do you start really filtering for that? So I've just put in the name here, then I go into domain 
And here you can see these are all the domains. Essentially, these are all the tables. These are all the domains that you have in the OMAP CDM, right? So I'm looking for the condition atrial fibrillation. So I'm going to click condition. Um, I want if I want the if I want only the standard uh, atrial fibrillation, then you can see now this is filtered for atrial fibrillation, and now you can see for standard concepts related to atrial fibrillation. The vocabulary is always SNOMED. All these concepts are standard. And I'm guessing that these concepts are all somehow, you know, it has the word atrial fibrillation, which is why, um, uh, you know, the search term, the term atrial fibrillation, why, that's why these concepts were pulled out because they include atrial fibrillation. And my guess is all of these are somehow related to this atrial fibrillation. So let's actually go and see if we can see the ancestors and the descendants of atrial fibrillation. So if you go ahead and actually click on atrial fibrillation, um, this is basically what you would see on the concept table for atrial fibrillation for the, um, you know, if you, if you just do a search on the uh, on the concept table. So these are sort of the main details. The concept ID is 313217. This is the SNOMED concept code. It's a standard concept. These are synonyms. Is it valid? And then here you can see all the relationships. So you can see that it's really active and possibly equivalent to inactive in SNOMED. These two concepts, um, associated finding of these concepts, History, family history of atrial fibrillation, uh, atrial fibrillation not detected, right? These are all concepts that atrial fibrillation is related to. Um, is a, so remember, is a, is, so atrial fibrillation is a descendant of atrial arrhythmia fibrillation. So this is exactly what we had seen, you know, in that, uh, in that, um, in that, in that chart before. Um, these are the standard to non-standard, some of the standard to non-standard maps. So this is, um, let's see, sorry. The standard to non-standard maps are all listed here. So this is the concept ID of atrial fibrillation in the mesh vocabulary. This is the uh, concept ID of atrial fibrillation in the seal vocabulary. This is the concept ID in the snowman vocabulary, right? And this is the standard. This one is the standard, right? In ICD-9 CM, it's that. In the read vocabulary, that's what it is, uh, and so on. So the and then these are all the descendants. So it subsumes all of these concepts, right? So you can see this is really a representation of everything that we were doing in our concept. Um, you know, using SQL, we were trying to do that in the concept. Um, relationship and concept ancestor table. So next time we ask you to, I mean, in fact, I would recommend that uh, go back to the earlier video and for all those same um, concepts, go ahead and see if you can find out what the standard concept ID is using Athena. And it, it is a lot, lot easier. So I've just clicked on this hierarchy button. I don't remember what happens here. So let's just see. Okay, so this is again a, a, a visual uh, description, and it you know has up to gives up to ten levels of detail. So here you can see this is atrial fibrillation, and then these are all the conditions, all the concepts that it subsumes. So you can see that permanent atrial fibrillation, chronic atrial fibrillation, familial atrial fibrillation, and then these are uh, concepts that it is a. So you can see that. Uh, it's fibrillation and atrial fibrillation. So these are the standard ones. Uh, and then these could be, you know, um, it's related somehow, but it, I think these are, um, um, these are cohorts. So don't worry about that, but yeah. And so this is a visual representation of the hierarchy. 
Um, let's go back. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot. When you guys first go to the Athena page, I, it didn't happen for me, but that's because I was already on Athena. You may get a little disclaimer that this is SNOMED and that you accept all the terms, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and just accept, click accept. Um, and you know, you should basically see this. Um, this is the page that you should see after that. So let's really see if we can find, um, I don't know, a procedure maybe your favorite procedure my dad's just having knee surgery so i'm gonna look at knee replacement okay wow all right so many these are the concept ids these are this these are the concept codes in all these different vocabularies so the one thing i do know about procedure is just like for conditions there was one standard vocabulary, which was SNOMED. SNOMED was the vocabulary that was considered to be more equal than the others. Procedure is one of those domains where there is no one particular vocabulary that is picked. Um, CPT4, um, you know, does include a lot of the standard procedures, but so do some of the others. The procedure is one of those domains that doesn't have one standard vocabulary, but has a couple. So now if I actually go in and say, go into the domain and I say, uh, cause here you can see that some of this knee replacement is procedure, but this is an observation knee replacement planned, uh, hip and knee replacement, this is a measured value. So I only want procedures. All right, so now I only have procedures and then I'm going to say, I only want standard. So I don't want any of these non-standard ones. So now you can see that these are all the standard procedures. These are all the standard concepts which have, you know, the term knee replacement in them. My guess is they are all, you know, related to each other in some sort of hierarchy. So let's go into total knee replacement to explore what that is. <clears throat> um, that's the concept code in the SNOMED vocabulary. This is the concept ID. That's the standard concept ID. Um, same as an active replacement of total knee joint. So, so that probably was the old name that's now been deprecated. It's now inactive. So just for fun, let's click it and see what happens. All right, so now you can see, so that was indeed deprecated because you can see the valid start date was Jan 31st, 2009 and 30th Jan 2019 is when it was deprecated and um, upgraded or remapped to total knee replacement, right? So do you see that basically the, the thing I really like about OMAP is it's completely backward compatible. They never leave, lose anything. All concepts always stay in there. So even if they become invalid, they still have a concept ID and their, their placeholder is still there. It's said that it's invalid and you are always told what it's been mapped to, right? So um, replacement of total knee joint has now been mapped to total knee replacement, right? And this is no longer valid. It was, it lo you know, it became invalid as of Jan 30th, um, 2019, right? That's when it became invalid. So it's non-standard and it's upgraded or remapped to this. So it'll give you, you know, all the relationships and, and, and so everything that's in those three tables is, is here, but it's, you know, it's point and click. So it's so much easier to explore, um, and understand how they're all related. Um, as you can see, so this particular standard uh, procedure concept ID is a, <coughs> so these are arthroplasty of knee, implantation of knee pro prosthesis with into knee joint. These are all um, its, ans its ancestors and these are the standard to non-standard maps. So these, these, this is what it may be mapped to in a different vocabulary. So MESH, READ, ICD-9, Procedure CN, the read, 
Nebraska le uh, lexicon. These are all the other. This is what it it may be mapped to, or what it's called. Uh, you know what it's called in other um, uh, vocabularies, and then these are the concepts that it subsumes. So it is the ancestor of these um, concept IDs, or these concept IDs are the children of this particular procedure concept ID. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Similarly, you can actually even um, look at drugs. So we had talked about warfarin. Uh, drugs, as it turns out, is a little bit more complicated, and I'm actually going to talk about that in the next video. But um, you know, all of the hierarchy, uh, uh, you know, all of those relationships are there for the drugs as well in here. So here, actually, I don't want warfarin as a procedure. So if I just look at warfarin, everything. So as you can see, I have, um, I have the class ingredient. Um, you know, lots of different values here. So we'll talk about what that means in the next video. Um, different domains, so warfarin as a measured value, warfarin as an observation, uh, warfarin as a drug. So I'm gonna go in and say, I want warfarin as a drug, and then I want only the standard concepts. Okay, so now you can actually see there's warfarin, the standard concept of warfarin, where it's an ingredient. And then this is all warfarin when it's a branded drug. Okay, so the domain is always drug. All of these are standard concepts. The vocabulary for drugs is Rx norm and Rx norm extension. So um, Rx norm extension is just an OMOP extension of a lot of the drugs, because as you probably know, drugs have completely different names in different parts of the world. And remember, OMOP is an international, um, you know, it's an international consortium. Uh, Odyssey is an international consortium. The goal of OMOP is to actually be able to include, um, you know, vocabularies from all around the world. So here you can actually see that warfarin. So he, this is this one refers to the branded drug warfarin, and two milligram, five milligram, oral, injectable. All of these actually are separate concepts. So warfarin is not just one concept. Different dosages of warfarin are different concepts. And we're going to talk about all of this much more in detail in the next video. But I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, go ahead and really play around with Athena. Uh, I really urge you to use Athena to do your exploration for when you, um, you know, before you try to create a cohort to really understand um, what your codes might mean um, and really understand them well. But I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.